We've been asked to raise the debt limit, extend the nation's credit one more time. This we have the power to do, but we have to ask our question, ourselves the question, should we exercise that power? Should we incur additional debt yet again without any plan moving forward to change fundamentally the way that we spend money in Washington, D.C.? Our current law requiring us to raise the debt limit periodically every time our existing line of credit dries up dates back to 1982. We've raised the debt limit since 1982 nearly 40 times. I fear that if we do it again this time without any permanent binding plan in place, legal restrictions, changing the way that Congress spends money, that we'll be right back to the same trough just a few months later. That's a problem, because as we do this over time, we inevitably put pressure on our financial system, pressure that will soon cause our economy uh, dire circumstances, pressure that will in time result in excessive job losses, skyrocketing interest rates, and lots of other economic conditions that would be, to say the least, unpleasant. It's for this reason that 100 senators from around the country have canceled their plans that they had previously made to spend time with their constituents in their respective home states this week. That had been our plan, to spend time in our home states. We canceled those plans so that we could come back here and have serious, earnest debate and discussion surrounding the best path forward toward moving in the direction of a balanced budget toward figuring out what conditions, if any, would satisfy the American people who are understandably concerned about the prospect of yet another knee-jerk, reflexive debt limit increase. The American people understand the fact that if we choose to do nothing more than say, well, if we're going to raise the debt limit by $2 trillion, let's make sure that we cut $2 trillion uh, from our anticipated spending. They understand that that kind of promise is one that isn't binding on the Congress. If those spending cuts are stretched out over the course of 10 or 15 years or more, as has been discussed. Because we here in this Congress cannot bind the Congress that will be sworn into power in January of 2013 or January of 2015 or January of 2017. We can't bind a future Congress. We can make suggestions that they can follow, but we can't bind them. Unless, of course, we choose to do that which has been done only 27 times in our nation's history, which is amend the Constitution, that will bind a future Congress. That, I believe, is what we have to do in order to change fundamentally the way we spend money in Washington, to make sure that we're not headed back to the same trough just a few months from now to do exactly the same thing, leading us closer and closer to the dire circumstances that I described a few minutes ago.